If you're building with Webflow for the first time or you're taking over a project from someone else in Webflow, you might come across a project with bad naming conventions. Now the problem with this is that it's messy, it's difficult to work with, and if you want to make a change across the site, you have to go through each page and update each element individually. Uh, and this usually comes out of someone who has building the site uh, as they go and not working off of a system or reusing classes. So instead of doing that, I'm going to show you a really simple naming convention system that you can use across your Webflow website uh, to keep it structured uh, and easier to maintain going forward. So first thing I would recommend is having a style guide or a design system page. Uh, something along the lines of this, though it doesn't have to look this fancy, it can just be a, a static page with uh, the you know, nav at the top and the foot at the bottom. Uh, but this is where you're going to keep all of the different styles and the different elements that you use throughout your website. So I've got in here typography, um, the different colors that I'm using, the different button styles, uh, both large and small, uh, the columns that I use for the column layouts, and then the grids that I use for the grid layouts. Uh, spaces to space out uh, different elements and sections, the icons used throughout, uh, the form styles, and also the tab styling. Um, but you can really put in here whatever you want and whatever you're using throughout the site. So the reason that you want to have a design system page is to keep everything in the same place, uh, especially if you want to make a change that uh, is affected across the website. Uh, and also when you're building new pages, uh, it can help to sometimes come back in and remember the styles or elements that you've set up that you can uh, reuse to keep everything consistent. So let's look at a page that I've set up using this system. Uh, we'll look at the home page. So other than the navigation, uh, the nav banner and the footer, I keep all of the uh, actual page content into different sections. Um, so they're all, all um, stacked on top of each other and you know that doesn't matter if it's all the same color or not. Uh, either way, it makes it easier to organize the content and um, keep everything uh, in line. So in terms of the styling for each section, uh, I put some uh, padding, some internal padding on the top and bottom of each section just to keep it spaced out, um, just so the content's not right up against the edges. Uh, and then other than that, I just add different colors, um, which makes it easy to uh, color that whole section. And you know that no matter what the screen size is, that color is going to go to the edges of the screen. I've also added classes for um, different amounts of padding. So half padding for, for banners if you want a little bit less. And then on larger sections, you can always um, double the padding or have zero padding if you don't need padding um, for a specific section. And then inside each section will be a container. And obviously this is the stuff that holds the elements. And so we give it a max width to make sure that if the screen size is too large, uh, the content isn't go, gonna go from edge to edge. There's gonna be a limit to um, how big it is. And it also means that if the screen size is smaller than the limit, uh, we're gonna give it some left and right padding just so it's not touching the uh, edges of the sides of the screen. So. I've given it 50 padding on desktop and a little bit less further down um, just so it fits different devices a little bit better. And again, you'll see that everything is kept the same. Um, and again, this is to make it so that if I wanna make a change across the website, it's gonna affect everything at once. And so rather than saying uh, logo container and feature container, it all has the same class. Um, so there's no point in, in making different names for the different sections, even with the section itself. It's, it's much better to use a universal system-wide um, class name. Now within the container, that's where we have the actual layouts. So there's two different layouts that I'll use most often. Uh, one is the, the column layout, the 12 columns. And so I've built a 12 columns element and then within that, I can add in uh, whatever sized columns to fit up to 12 columns. So this is a five, a one, and a six, which makes up to 12. And then on the different screen, screen sizes, it's adapted to better fit. So uh, here we can see that on tablet, it's six, and then this one has turned into a zero, and the six has stayed the same. Uh, and we can change that all the way down to mobile just by adding on extra classes and then changing the width um, of that class uh, to, to better fit the content. Now for the columns, you'll notice that uh, I have some padding on the inside of the columns and also on the 12 columns, I have a negative margin. Um, and so the reason that we do that is to keep everything aligned with the sides 
while still having some space in between the columns for the content. And that's when you have two columns right next to each other. Um, there's gonna be a 32 gap in between the content um, just so that it's not so close together. Now the other kind of layout that I use is the grid layout. Uh, and this is for kind of, um, this is just another way of organizing the content. And I'll do it the same way as I do the columns where I use a universal uh, grid element. And then I'll just, um, I'll say how, how many columns I want in the grid for the different screen sizes. So it's three on desktop and three on tablet and then on mobile it's down to two. And again, that makes it super flexible so you can decide uh, how many columns, or what you want the layout to be on different screen sizes. And you know, we're not confined to a specific number. We could also do um, maybe even like a desk uh, one and a two. And then we can just edit that and say we want a one on one side and then we want a two on the other side. Um, so for different feature sections, you can completely switch it up in terms of how you want the layout. So let me just undo that back to normal. And the only other element that I use mainly throughout when I'm building pages is spacer elements. And so that's when uh, you don't really want to add more padding to a, a title or, or an element. You don't want to have to add on a class that says, um, you know, 50 bottom padding. Uh, you can just space it out with a spacer and you can make that size uh, as big or as small as you want it. So uh, again, you'll notice I have a universal space element and then the different sizes uh, depending on how much space the section needs. And those are basically all of the, the basic elements that I use uh, to, to build a page. Um, the only other thing is typography. And um, I would recommend building on the default um, default kind of classes where you can change the, the size of all H2 uh, headings. But I also would recommend having a heading uh, and the different classes um, as individual classes as well. And that's so if you want different sizes down the page. So um, we want this to be an H2 or an H3 because it's not the main content of the page like the title is, but we, we still want it to be big. Um, and so we're not gonna make it an H1, we're going to override it with an H1 class, but it's still an actual H2 element. So using all of these elements, let's go into a new page uh, and let's build out some of those sections that we were just looking at. So again, we have the, the navigation and the footer uh, across the website so we can reuse those. And we also have a wrapper that defines um, that the minimum height of the, the landing viewport is gonna be the full width of the screen. So no matter how much content we have um, on the initial page load, they're not gonna see the footer on load, which keeps it a little bit tidier. And so now we're gonna add in our content so we can either drag in the section or uh, Command E and add a section. And then we're gonna add the section class to the elements. So we'll add in section or we'll click on a class and hit Command Enter and then do the same thing. So we'll change the color of this one and then we'll add a couple of these sections down the page. Maybe we'll make this one white and this one green. Next, we're gonna add in uh, containers to each section. So again, we can either drag it in or we can hit Command E to add in a container and then add the container class either by filling it in or hitting uh, Command Enter and filling it in that way. And we're gonna copy those containers to the other sections that we've just added. And now we can add the different layouts in. So uh, rather than using the built-in columns, which I find a little bit limiting at times, we're gonna use a um, just a div element and give it our 12 columns name and this is where we're gonna add our columns into it. So we'll add in another div block and then give it the column class. And since this is a hero section, we'll give it a column five, a column one, and then a column six for the text gap and illustration. So we'll make this uh, five on desktop and then we'll copy that out a couple times. The second one is a one and then the last one is a six. And now we can add in some elements. So let's add in a header to the first column or hit Command E and we'll add a paragraph. And now we don't need anything in the gap and we can add in something uh, to the last column. Let's add in one of uh, 
Let's add in this illustration. And now we want to adjust it a bit for the different screen sizes. So let's go down to tablet. Um, and so I've made some of them auto adjust, but we can uh, fix that. So I'll make that tab six. This column one, we'll make it a zero. And then this last one seems to already be a six. And then it's going to auto adjust uh, for mobile, but I can also add another class if I wanted to uh, switch the different elements. So if I want this one to be on top, um, then I can do that as well. And so now we've adjusted that for all of, all of the different screen sizes down to mobile. And next we'll add in some features. So uh, this time we'll use a grid, add in a grid into the container, give it the name of grid, and then we'll uh, make it a um, three on desktop. And we'll give this section a title uh, inside of the container. Sometimes you might have to drag it in this way. We'll give that an H2 and then we'll add a spacer. So command E, regular div, command enter, spacer. We'll give that 48. Then we'll add in another div. This is where we're gonna put the content of uh, each of the grid uh, elements into. And then we'll add in a H3 and the paragraph. And let's also add an icon up top. And I've also set up an icon class to keep all of the icons are the same size. And so now we'll copy this out a couple times. And there we go, now we've set up another section and we might just want to adjust it, uh, maybe for mobile. So we'll go back into our grid tablet we want it to stay the same and then mobile we want to make it two columns and that's basically the whole system and that can be repeated um, throughout when you're building new pages and again it means that you're only using a set amount of different classes and you're not you know building a new class uh, or adding on a new class every time you add on a new section so you know um, features left with right image I mean obviously that's a terrible class name but either way you wouldn't want to be able uh, you wouldn't want to have to create a new class every single time you add in a new element and that's about it uh, that's the best simplest system that I've found to build new pages really quickly in Webflow